We are Double Helix. This is Jonga Kim. I'm Janice McCoy. And we are reviewing All You Need Is Kill by Hiroshi Sakurazaka. Right. So um, this is the original book that um, is behind the new Tom Cruise movie, uh, The Edge of Tomorrow, which has absolutely no relation as far as I can tell in terms of the title to um, the original yeah, book. The title. Not the, title. Right. the title is they very just... nondescript in yeah. a very odd sci-fi way. Yeah, I mean, it could yes. be a James Bond movie, it could be sci-fi, it could be so many things. Right. I don't, yeah. Oh, they should have stuck with All You Need Is Kill, I think. Yes. Maybe a little um, too Yeah. It's, um, it's a Japanese novel that's translated pretty well, and it tells the story of an alien invasion um, from the point of view of a new recruit in the Japanese army, and he teams up with an enigmatic uh, young lady who is a veteran and learns from her Big secret that may save humanity. So, did it work for us? Yes and no. And no. Yeah. yeah, there were things we liked and things we didn't. So, right. we'll tell you about them and you can decide whether the things we didn't like are too much of a turnout or the things we turn off or the things we li we liked are enough of a draw. We'll right. Leave it to you. Yeah. So, we'll start with what worked. Um, so, the first thing is the pacing. The pacing works really well. We can see why it, it was turned into a movie because mm -hmm. it's action packed. You know, the, the battle scenes are very, you know, um, they're very descriptive and they're done in a way that you can understand what's going on, even though we have nothing in real life, such as a, an exoskeleton that we would wear <laughs> to do um, battle. To battle. Starfish like yes. alien exactly. creatures. Right. Yes. But it's all very believable. And um, I think yeah. that's something that's very enjoyable about this movie, mm -hmm. book. book. <laughs> um, we also liked uh, some of the ideas, um, which were more complex and more interesting um, than the movie version. Right. And also, I think uh, one of the things for me that I thought was interesting was um, the way that they describe this alien invasion, which I think makes a lot more sense than a typical Hollywood depiction of what an alien invasion would look like. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we want to say more than that because it is... Probably not. Right. It is kind of an interesting aspect of the book that you should probably find out for yourself. Yeah, I think so. Now, what didn't work for us? There are some things which are kind of big things that didn't <laughs> work for us. Yeah, I would describe the book overall as feeling like it's aimed at teenage boys more than more a general audience. Um, lots of emphasis on fighting and the fight scenes. Um, and then the way that the female characters are described um, in a way that the male characters aren't. You get a very physical description of the female characters, often including breast size, um, which <laughs> seems completely unnecessary to me. Um, and Given the fact that it's the army. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not, not every character is in the army that they meet, but um, it is from the point of view mostly of this recruit. And so you're getting the ideas filtered through him. So it's, Perhaps what he's noticing, um, but it still ends up feeling like the ideas and the writing are more sophisticated than what a fifteen-year-old boy would write. But otherwise, it feels like it's written by a fifteen-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the female characters. I think generally we have a bit of a problem with, mm -hmm. um, even though this does um, feature a very strong female um, heroine who is Rita, um, both in the book and the movie. She is a central character. And that's great. Um, we don't see a lot of very strong female characters, typically, especially in a, a, a sci-fi book that's uh, based on battles with aliens. It's pretty rare. Um, but um, I think what we would have liked a little bit more shading in the characters, a little bit more rounding out. Yes. Um, Rita's character is, in the book, um, something that I couldn't quite understand. And that might have been because some aspects of it were still clinging to a stereotype. Yes. Um, it's the warrior who is galvanized to do something. Um, something that we see um, in other books as a, a male character doing, but this one just happens to be female. Right. So that doesn't change the stereotypical nature of it. Right. I do give the author credit for trying. Um, he even has um, movie action figures of some of the characters in the book, sort of holding their own action figures. And there's a stark contrast between what they look like and what the action figure looks like. Um, particularly Rita, her right. action figure is books have been blonde and she's not. Um, 
But I feel like he substituted one Hollywood stereotype with another sci-fi stereotype. The, you know, the sort of kick-ass warrior woman for the blonde, busty woman, who's also a warrior woman. Um, the sort of cool science geek with the uncool science geek who fumbles everything. Um, right, that is still a stereotype, that's the thing. <clears throat> yeah. Even though the scientist in the book is a woman, um, I think one of the reasons maybe why the movie substituted her so easily with a man was because it was still a stereotype. Yes, yes. Uh, just a the thing. inherent character was the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the book technically passes um, the Bechdel test, and that's where you have two named female characters having a conversation with each other about something other than a man. Um but it felt a little out of place and odd. Um, it was the only only conversation of its type throughout the book, in spite of the fact that there were a couple other female characters. Right. And each female character tends to be very isolated among yes. all of these men. Yes. Um, and described in, in a way that emphasizes always their physicality. Um, right. Uh, and actually, um, there was a point in the book that uh, you pointed out where they describe they actually categorize women in three different ways, right? It's right. not very flattering. That's and it's the narr. It's the it's not. He's not the narrator, but he's he at this point he's third person limited. So it, we are getting his thoughts, and he thinks there are three kinds of women, and he does it totally for appearance. Yeah. Um. And to me, that was sort of symptomatic of of the books thinking about women. So we have a problem with the way the book treats women. If that's not something that's likely to bother you. You probably yeah. wouldn't even notice it. You might honest. not even notice. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, um, yeah, I mean, so the conclusion is it's an exciting read. We can actually really see why it was turned into a movie. Mm -hmm. um, it makes perfect sense within its own world. However, if you take it out of that context, it does have its problems. Yes, particularly if you are looking for strong female characters. Right. 